So far, we've had four yellow lights, two minor wrecks, but nobody hurt. Uh, Tom Kovac, winner of four of USAC's five previous races this season, is coming in to refuel. Kovac has been leading for 28 of the 34 laps. What's the matter with Weber? He nearly went off at turn four. Ah, oh, he's edgy. Must need the money. I bet you'd like to see him win. Second place money will have to be good enough for him. Wyndham and Devon, dear. Okay, let me have a look. Well, this is one Kovac couldn't walk away from. But he will. Okay, let's get him out of here. what he said to you and Andretti. Last year, after Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Tom, could we get back now to what happened in the Pennsylvania run yesterday? <laughs> That's very simple. I lost the race. Tom, you're being very evasive again. No, Mr. Ray, I don't mind. I'll go on holding. No, 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 Europe. Tom. Uh, let's not leap into next week just yet. Now, they gave you up for dead. So, I'll ask the question. Did it seem you were dead for a moment? I don't know. I guess you might say I was... All right, okay. Let's get back to the manor house you saw. Now, what about that house? Now, now the doctor reported about you seeing a manor house and hearing a woman scream. Yeah, well, I, I guess... Maybe I thought I saw something. But you maybe did see something, like I can tell. House. I guess that's what you'd say it was. Mm. I was on a stretch, full out, and all of a sudden... I wasn't in Pennsylvania anymore. I was on this gravel road headed for the house. Then just as suddenly I was back on the track and a lot of guys were trying to climb all around me into the lead, all of which, of course, is impossible. Which is not impossible. <laughs> then I thought I saw a hay wagon. I hay no, wagon. I repeat, my price is quite firm. After the crash... It is an authentic 15th century manuscript. Woman screaming her head off. Yes, I hope. A little girl with... I guess you'd call it a sly grin smirking at her. Sly grin. And then? That said, it was all over. And who were away they? From that crash, oh, uh, no, I'm terribly sorry. Now, yes. Let's get back to the manor Yes. House, I'll be in New York until tomorrow. In Thank England. you. Right. Goodbye. Well, now, how did you know? Uh, a general look of that and uh, the voice. It said, Wyndham in Devon. You can't get much more English than that. No, you certainly can't. We'll take a break here. We'll be back in a minute. Wyndham. Wyndham in Devon. It's Wyndham in Devon, dear. I don't think I'll be able to sleep on the plane, Mommy. I want to get there so bad. 
When we get to London, will we go to Wyndham right away? Oh, no. We'll spend a couple of nights in London. We're not really due there until Thursday, you know. You're not going to start calling up agents and producers and stuff. I promise you, I'm leaving all my career stuff here at home. No interviews, no scripts, no telephone call to Los Angeles, nothing. Just fun. A good fun vacation, right? Are you glad you're going to be seeing Daddy again? Hmm. Do you think you might? Get together again. I don't know, Jen. His letters have been so nice lately, I'd like to think so. I keep reminding myself it's been 11 years since I saw him. You probably like him a whole lot better. As the great philosopher says, 10 or 11 years makes a big difference to the heart. What great philosopher said that? Me. We just have to wait and see what happens, okay? Okay. I was born in Ohio, a little town called Oskegon. And did you have any visions there as a boy? Oh, yeah. I had a lot of visions of getting out of Oskegon. <laughs> oh, you're marvelous, even better than on television or on the track. Crackers? What? Oh, no, thank you. Look, however you track me down, whatever it is you're here for, are you sure you wouldn't rather explain it over a martini? Sorry, I only have 14 minutes to talk to you before a dinner appointment. Seriously. I want to ask you what you intend to do about that poor woman. Which poor woman? The one who screamed in your vision. Her life is obviously in jeopardy. From now on, Kovac, stick to wheels. No more TV interviews. <laughs> How interesting. You say Kovac and not Tom when you talk to yourself. I always say Michelle, not Brent. <laughs> well, Tom or Kovac, I do know something about the occult. I've studied for five years with Ram Gat Singh and then, of course, with Willie Smith for two. Of course. So, it would be more than helpful if you would draw a picture for me. Draw a picture? Mm-hmm. Oh. All right. Why not draw a picture? You want a, a Porsche or a Ferrari? The manor house you saw. Would you draw it from memory, please? My art teacher said I showed great promise as a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> You're serious? Very. Okay. I, uh, I earn my living selling rare books, in the course of which I've gained a great deal of knowledge on witchcraft and the occult. You know, I know this great Armenian restaurant on East 54th Street. Concentrate, and... please. You think I'm silly? 
or maybe dangerous. Well, I'm neither. And I have none of the powers which I'm convinced that you have. It may come as an unpleasant shock to you, Michelle, but I'm not scared of black cats, Friday the 13th, or walking under ladders. As a matter of fact, every once in a while, I get my kicks walking under a ladder. Not strange at all, considering who you are. Uh, now, go on, you were doing beautifully. Evil forces do exist, always have. Now, read your least to our sea sheet by Rochambeau, and you will see that there were three instances of an experience almost exactly like yours between 1632 and 16... That is absolutely fantastic. You've seen it. It's the place. Look. Wyndham in Devon. Now, like it or not, you have rare and mysterious insight. Honey, listen. What you call insight, I call a knock on the head that I got when I wrecked my car at 160 miles an hour. Can you understand that? I understand this. Very seldom does someone intelligent, giving, and... Well, why shouldn't I use the word good? Acquire the strength to fight the force of evil. You have. And you have got to come with me. Where? to England to save that woman. <laughs> but I don't even know the woman. Besides, she's probably not in England. She's an American. Uh, how do you know that? Her accent. When she said Wyndham in Devon, it was definitely American. That's absolutely marvelous. Now, have you ever seen her or heard her before? Maybe. I'm not sure. And the little girl? No. Oh. But you said on television that you were going to Europe anyway. To chase cars, not wild geese. And now you're chasing me. Out. Sanford here? Ah, oh, you'll have to ask Mrs. Faraday. My dear Miss Glenn, or should I call you Mrs. Sanford? Oh, I answer to both. Mrs. Faraday. Yes. And of course, you're Jennifer. You know, the last time I saw your mother, she was riding a wild horse in Technicolor. My first and last Western. <laughs> Mrs. Faraday, is my father here yet? Your father? Was he supposed to be? Well, yes, we were to meet him here. Oh, I, I hope there's been no misunderstanding. The room was reserved for you and the child. No mention was made of Mr. Sanford. Oh, uh, won't you come in? Didn't Daddy make the reservation? Why isn't he here? He will be, Jen. He lives in a house in the village. There's no reason for him to stay here. Well, why didn't he ask us to his house? You've asked me that, and I've explained. Be a little patient. This is a lovely place. Hey, look! The sea's right here. Yes, and it's wild and dangerous. But of course, those of us who live at Wyndham enjoy the excitement of the sea. <laughs> Daddy, I've been waiting my whole life to meet you. Temperature today in New York City reached a record-breaking high of 98 degrees. According to the United States Weather Bureau, there should be a drop to the mid-80s by midnight. Tomorrow continues hot and humid. Strong gusty winds by Thursday, however, should mean more comfortable temperatures by the end of the week. Now back to the main news. During the New York Spring Car Championships at the Bronx Speedway, Red Mackey won the 50-lap main event. Hello? Kovac, I'm calling for Michelle Brent. Oh, oh yeah. She tried to reach you earlier, but had to leave for London, but said if you want to contact her, she'll be at the Chester House off the Tower Bridge Road. <laughs> okay, I'll make a note of it. Thank you.
Yes, thank you very much. Can I be of any help? Well, my husband doesn't seem to have a telephone. At least the operator said he wasn't listed. Oh, that's not uncommon around here. But I can give you directions to reach Mrs. Sanford. Mrs. Sanford? She made your reservation. I believe she's related to your father. You'll meet her, of course. Louise often comes for dinner. Daddy never mentioned her in his letters. Daddy's letters weren't exactly epics. You can take the footpath to the village to reach her. She lives in Cliff Cottage. Oh, good. Well, we'll go there first thing in the morning, then. In the meantime, my dear, it's about an hour past your bedtime. Can't we go to the village now, Mommy? Jennifer. Okay. Good night, Mrs. Faraday. Good night, Jennifer. And good night, Miss Kangaroo. What's her name? Wendy. Wendy Wyndham Sanford. It is. I just decided. <laughs> <laughs> I've been expecting you, right on schedule. I thought you English always said schedule. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. I was just trying to make you feel at home. Well, that wouldn't be too hard. You have a very nice place. I share the flat with my sister. She's in Paris at the moment on holiday. Manor Estates Limited. You wouldn't be planning a vacation yourself. Well, as you can see, one can stay at your manor house in Wyndham. How about that? I only hope Mrs. Faraday has some rooms left. I made some inquiries. She owns Wyndham and takes guests during the summer. You know, noblesse oblige, taxes and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm surprised you didn't go ahead and reserve the rooms. I should have. Tom Kovac, I didn't tell the truth just now. I wasn't sure that you'd come. But I can't tell you how grateful I am that you have. Really, for that woman's sake. Hey. I get emotional about it. I'm here. I'm here. Really, thank you. Thank you for coming. You talk about me having powers. You did all right with that travel agent. My power consisted of handing him a five-pound note under the table. For two cancellations to dear old Wyndham. Look out! But my power never caused me to wake up soaking wet on the floor after a dip in the channel. And I bet it was the channel. You know, I could have stepped into my shower, slipped on a cake of soap, hit my head on the tiles, and crawled out half-conscious. I doubt that. I mean, you're here. Maybe because my shower doesn't normally run salt water. Look, look out! Now, I think you should leave for Wyndham first and arrive ahead of me. Hmm? Definitely. There are evil forces there, and we can't be too careful. That must be the cottage over there, Jan. Takes me a while to get around, you know. But do come in. Look, Mommy, it's you. Yes, of course it is. Why should it be anyone else? I've followed your career for years. Why haven't they televised any of your films in this country? Can you tell me that? Aren't I rude? I'm screaming at you, and I haven't even introduced myself. You're a fan club named Louise Sanford Wyndham Branch, and I'm very happy to meet you at last. <laughs> Duncan and I are cousins by marriage, you know. But where is my father? I knew you would ask that. I wish I could tell you. I got a note from him to make arrangements for you at Wyndham. I naturally thought he'd be on hand to greet you. I'm afraid we've been temporarily stood up. Of course, but only temporarily. It isn't like Duncan. 
But let me show you, dear. Just round that corner, you'll find a funny little cabinet with drawers. Yes, I see it. In the bottom drawer on the right-hand side, there's something for you. My letters. And your drawings. He's very proud of you. He's held on to every scrap. When did Duncan leave, Mrs. Sanford? Oh, please, call me Louise. Well, he used to go back and forth. London, Glasgow, Liverpool. I haven't heard from him for some time, except for the note about your room. There in the drawer. But I received a letter from him written ten days ago. six months he's written very often and his letters have been different how peculiar that he's not at Wyndham perhaps he's in London I, I wonder if I should try to get in touch with John Parrish are he and Duncan still friends I hope not I'm not very fond of Parrish rather a creep as the children say nowadays of creeps <laughs> I wasn't very fond of him either but he might know something do you have any idea where I might reach him no I'm afraid not do you know what I think, Jennifer? That that attractive rogue of a father of yours has some sort of super surprise for you and your ma, and he's waiting for exactly the right moment to spring it. Hmm? <laughs> now, shall we all have a happy and hopeful cup of tea? Oh, I'm for that. How about you, Jen? Yes, okay. May I help? Oh, all right, I can manage. That's a Polish name, isn't it? It's a name name, Mrs. Faraday. My paternal grandfather was from Warsaw. His wife was from Holland. The other side was Irish. I guess that makes me 100% Midwestern American, right? Yes, I suppose it does. And may I show you our library? Miss Glenn, I'd like you to meet a countryman of yours. Mr. Thomas Kovac, Andrea Glenn. How do you do? Haven't we met somewhere before? Or does everyone ask you that? Perhaps we have met before, but if we haven't, I'm very glad to meet you now. And Miss Glenn's daughter, Jennifer. Hi, Mr. Kovac. You must be tired from your train ride. Let me show you to your room. Perhaps we'll see you later, Mr. Kovac. safe, Mr. Kovac. They do have lifts in the American Midwest, I assume. Oh, yeah, yeah. Smell the sea, the salted perfume. <laughs> Mr. Verretti tells me he spends every summer in England. Oh, nice. For England. Mr. Kovac, Miss Brent. How do you do? Signor Varelli. Piacere. Pleased to meet you. I wish I'd taken the two o'clock car. That yours? Y yes, it is. Oh, please, please. Hopkins will do that. That's all right. I can get her. Signora Faraday. Something tells me that tonight you will serve the Dover Sole from your water so blessedly close. I'm afraid we're having roast beef tonight. <laughs> hmm. The woman, the girl, and the elevator, they're all here. And look. Your salty shower. Okay, so where's the evil force? Give me time. Give me time. I've only been here three hours. Oh, meraviglia. My trip is finished, complete, and rare glen. I have seen every film that you have made, every one. Oh, well, I've put you several ahead of me, senor, but thank you very much. Why didn't you tell me that the screaming lady in your vision is Andrea Glenn? I never saw her in a flick where she screamed. 
That still doesn't explain the sly little girl. It's her daughter and a doll. I read recently that you'd raced in Russia. How is Russia, Mr. Kovac? <laughs> Very big, Miss Brent. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Faraday, you certainly do pull in the celebrities. Miss Glenn and Tom Kovac. He's very big in racing car circles. I'm afraid I don't follow the sport. But it does suggest to me now why you're here, Mr. Kovac. It's Gurley that attracted you. Gurley? My late husband's true love. You'll get to meet her. I'll get Hopkins to show you to your room. Mr. Tracewell. I do? Hmm. I saw you driving through those streets with amazing dash. Uh -huh. It's trying to get it over with quickly, aren't you, Georgie? George? Get what over with? Business, I mean. Oh. Combining business with pleasure, George? Uh, you could say that, Tom. Please, Mrs. Faraday. <laughs> Let me do it. Oh, with pleasure. I noticed from your letterhead, Signor Varelli, that you're a, an engineer. I build the autostrade, the roads. In Italia, all roads lead straight from my office. <laughs> Varelli of Milano. I hope I do not sound immodest. Not at all. One takes pride in one's doings. I bet you'd like a hamburger. I'm just not hungry. I'm afraid Jen isn't used to tea and cakes at four and supper at eight. I'm really not hungry, Mommy. May I please leave the table? It's perfectly all right. You go right on ahead, dear. Your daughter was saying... Peg, please. About her father. Oh, yes, I'm afraid she is a little disappointed. But I think he's probably just been delayed. He always did like entrances, whether it was on stage or off. about not telling her, Daddy. She wants to see you, too. Well, don't you think I want to see her? It's not easy, Jen. But it's especially important that you say nothing to her as yet. The people who want to keep us apart. Who are they? Why do they? I'm fighting them. So the three of us can return to America together. Will you help me? You know I will, Daddy. You'll have to be very strong. In some ways, you'll have to give up being a child. You'll have to keep a number of secrets from your mother. I can't. Well, I never have. But you will. Because I'm asking you, darling. Open the box. this, you can help me. Take it. Put it round your neck. You'll wear it all the time. But you'll show it to no one. To no one, Jennifer. Glenn, please come in. Mrs. Faraday, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm looking for Jennifer. 
Perhaps she's outside. Oh, but it's so late. It's a lovely evening. Nearly a full moon. I'd better track her down and get her to bed. Shall I take this into the house? No, perhaps not. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, not here. <laughs> mm. Oh, hello. Oh, you haven't seen my daughter around, have you? No, sorry, no. No. Jennifer? Jennifer? Funny, Jen. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. I've been here all evening. Where's here? I couldn't find you. You're losing your sense of humor, Mother. Jen, since when have you started calling me Mother? When I stopped calling you Mommy. I won't be needing that anymore. It's nothing but a childish toy. Hi. Hello. You guessed it. This is Gurley. Interesting. Very interesting. 27 Bentley. I mean how men womanize any machine that serves them. Ah. You're one of those, uh, Women's lib? No, uh, no, no, uh -huh. no. I'm open to all views. Tell me, does it work? Been out of action for a long time. Our hostess asked me to have a look. It took me three years to get from 12 to 15. Where did she go? She's vanished. I have a feeling about that girl. Not anything she's done yet, but something she's going to do. Something evil. Michelle, this is a little... What is it? Saw something. Something... Uh, growing. Yes, yes. What was it like? But it's gone. Try and refocus the image. How can I refocus an image that I can't even see anymore? Oh, don't blame me, Tom Kovac. It was your image. Wait, wait, wait. It's not, it's not clear. I can't see what it is. No, 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 no. Don't rush. Try not to rush. I once knew a Tibetan psychic, and he said one cannot rush. I'm not rushing. But please, tell me exactly what your Tibetan psychic would do right now. Focus on the center of the image. Now work from the center out. There's um, a girl's hands, and she's squeezing a leaf. The girl, is it Jennifer? I can't tell. It's, it's all hazy. It's all gray. Well, try and concentrate on the color. Just pick one object and get the color. The glass is red. And the juice is being... Yes? 
Ah, it's gone. But the hand was squeezing something into me. Someone's going to be drinking out of that red glass. Come on. This way. Uh, uh, could, could I have your autograph? Uh, right this minute. Yeah, you see, I'm, I'm writing to this nephew of mine in Walla Walla. And he's even a bigger fan of yours than Signor Varelli. If that's possible. Well, yes, I suppose so. I, I don't have any... Paper. Paper. Uh, paper? Oh, will this do? It even has Wyndham and Devil. Uh, oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that, uh, that's oh. a terrible thing. Oh, that's stupid. I, I, don't, I don't know how to apologize. Try, Mr. Kovac. Well, you're not going to believe this, but I, I was out... Why don't you just say that Wyndham, lovely as it is, is having a peculiar effect on all of us? So much so that Jen and I are leaving tomorrow. Oh, that's splendid. Splendid. Well, thank you, Miss Brent. Or should I say Miss Blunt? She, uh, she is a little weird. I'm even beginning to wonder about the rare books. You really handled that. Subtle, wasn't I? Mm, but you ought to be more careful making of a place like Walla Walla. Michelle, don't let him hear you say that in Walla Walla. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't they have any dances in the village? Why didn't you tell me you're interested, Jennifer? Boys. I should like to meet some boys. I'll see what I can arrange. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Faraday look younger to you? Mm-hmm. You're not responsible for it, I hope. No. It was very strange. It's almost as if he knocked the glass over on purpose. He's weird. Mm-hmm. Maybe he and his girlfriend are the ones. They didn't meet here for little old openers. They planned to come to Wyndham together. Some sort of plot. I've heard. What are you saying? Well, while we're at it, would you mind telling a misguidedly curious mom just what's happened to you? You look older. Well, I'm not wearing any makeup, am I? I haven't taken to wearing your clothes. This is me. Mother. Jen. Hopkins tells me you didn't have your orange juice. <gasps> You know, Mrs. Faraday, if I were a drinking woman, I'd ask for something spiked. If you'd like a little brandy. Oh, no, I'm probably just exaggerating. Change in climate, anticipation, Duncan. Duncan. It's impossible to believe that Jennifer should want to kill her mother. Well, maybe it wasn't Jennifer. Don't forget, Andrea is loaded. Hmm, but as far as I can tell, Jennifer is her only heir. Unless, of course, her husband thinks that he's going to... That's the one. 
That's the plan she tore the leaf off. Oh, yes. You know it? Mm-hmm. Black tar are widely used in occult practices. It's related to the oleander, but the leaves are very, very different. Much more poisonous. Doctor. Reed. Dr. Reed. Are you the husband? No. But I think you ought to know that, that she got sick from black... T well, uh, she um, could have had oleander in her food. Hmm. Oleander? Yeah. I prefer to arrive at my own diagnosis. Thank you. Your palomologist. What's that? Jewelry freak. It's time we were leaving back. Come on. So it is. Signora Faraday holds in her cellar one of the world's finest ports. Uh, you will have some? Well, perhaps a drop. For my port side rheumatism. <laughs> <laughs> port? Thank you. May I have a brandy? Brandy, sir. It's too bad the trace wells are going to miss this. They've just gone upstairs. Should I ask them to join us? I suggest that you don't, Mr. Kovac. They're going out. Trace wells seem to go out most every night, don't they, Mrs. Faraday? Well, if they do, it, it really isn't any of our business, is it, Mr. Kovac? <laughs> oh, Jennifer. You must tell your mum in the morning that I looked through some of your father's old letters and I found John Parrish's return address. It's the Apollo Theatre, Shaftesbury Avenue. May I propose a toast? To the rapid recovery of Andrea Glenn and, if I may be so bold, to our hostess and her continued rejuvenation. Perhaps once you... you built a road to the Fountain of Youth and brought it here with you, Signore. <laughs> yes. What have you been doing to yourself, Catherine? Secret. About the port, Mr. Varelli. Do you think that 1927 was a better year than 1955? Hmm? I really would like to have your expert opinion on 1927 port. Well, of course, it is a very good port. A very good year, 1927. As a matter of fact, it is... May I call you Michel? The 1927 port. <laughs> Very good. I'll let you walk out. I'm sorry I'm late. I was detained by a suspicion. A what? In Devon tonight, the trace wells with a car loaded with pharmaceuticals. Drugs? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I don't believe that those two young people uh, would... You're probably right. And what about vintage wines? Did Varelli explain all about 1927 port? In case you didn't know, they often serve poison in wines in medieval Italy. Poison in wine? Poison and orange juice. We better keep an eye on Varelli. Oh, what about that John Parrish? Yes, now you picked that up too. Mm -hmm. I thought he might be able to give us the answer to where Duncan Sanford is. Why don't you go up to London and make inquiries? And leave you here? Alone? All right, I'll go. But only if you promise to be very careful. I promise.
ever said jolly England. <laughs> I think I'd better leave tonight. Well, your mirror can't be complaining, age-wise. No, oh, no, no, no. It laughs right in my face with me. Younger and younger every day. Miraculously, beautifully. Please, please don't make that stop. Whatever you wish, Catherine, darling. <laughs> Um, excuse me, I wonder if anyone here would know a John Parrish. John Parrish, huh? Oh, yes, I would, miss. He gets his mail at the theatre, doesn't he? Few letters, miss. I haven't seen Parrish for some time. Last I heard of him, he had a shop somewhere off King's Road. King's Road? Mm. Thank you. Right, miss.
Hey, you. What are you looking for? Nothing. I'm just browsing around. You shouldn't be in here. It's dangerous. It's a bad one. Mm. Wonder the old building didn't come down. The fellow who run this shop died in the fire. Was his name Parrish? Yes. Did you know him? Welcome back, Miss Brent. Thanks. Scusa, signora. I must learn from them. Young people today seem to take to each other so suddenly. I don't want to shatter your illusions, Mrs. Faraday, but I don't think they've just met. What? They've known each other before, at least according to my little gossip columnist, Jennifer. Before they came to Wyndham? Mm hmm Well, why would they want to pretend? Oh, it's probably just an escapade. Two attractive young people who want to be together. Well, not here at Wyndham. Not in my home. Practically the same thing happened to you in your apartment in New York. You almost drowned there, too. But this was no vision, Michelle. This was cold, wet reality. He wants to kill me. But why'd you say he, when the voice you heard calling you must have been Jennifer's? Might have been, not must. And I'm not convinced that it was Jennifer who loosened that guardrail, either. Tom, let's face it, the whole pattern not only suggests Jennifer, but also that she has psychic power. Oh, come on. Yes, as you do. <sighs> All right, let's... Drive along your track for a while. We might as well. Did it ever occur to you that your evil force, if such a thing really exists, might be Duncan Sanford? Why Duncan Sanford? You said you found some objects dealing with witchcraft in that burned out shop, right? Right. And you discovered that Parrish is dead, right? Right. Well, if Duncan was so close to Parrish, couldn't he too have been dabbling in your occult? <laughs> Look!
you are right, Tom Kovac. This is too much for us to handle. You're out of breath, Varelli. Where have you been? I make the exercise, the jog. <laughs> I said where? Signore. Take your hands off him at once. Signore, my apologies. Mr. Kovac and Miss Brent. First you came to my house misrepresenting your relationship, and now you've attacked one of my guests. Will you kindly vacate your rooms by tomorrow? Now listen, Mrs. Faraday. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. Yes? It's Mr. Varelli, and he's covered with blood. Whose blood? Now, that's Shh. very important. I don't know. Very important. I... Shh. <clears throat> but... Sorry to disturb you. Oh, you were just playing a guessing game. Oh. And is guessing your game? The laboratory report does show that Miss Glenn is suffering from poisoning. It's a type of oleander. Now, the question remains, how did you know? Oh, well, no matter. Surely an accident. You were right, Michelle. It always comes back to Jennifer. Thank you, dear. It's okay, Mother. I promised Dr. Reed I'd take care of your medicine. I have this awful feeling about Wyndham now. It's because of your illness. No, it's Jennifer. She's matured remarkably, hasn't she? Well, it, it happens with some girls. No, it's not just that. It's the way she looks, the way she acts, and the way she dresses. The things she's done. Remind you of a dunk? At the worst times, whenever Parrish was around, he'd fall into those moods. Oh, those moods made me shudder, too. Are you afraid that Jennifer may have inherited that uh, strain? Strain? But you don't inherit. No, that's not possible. No, of course not. Blame an aging woman for not minding her tongue. It would mean believing in something that I refuse to believe in. But I am frightened. Always, always, I come back to the same three points. Which are? Point one. You had a vision that Varelli had blood on him. So you thought it was he that was driving the black van. For some reason. I can't be sure about him. Point two. What about the trace wells? They sell drugs, and there are some drugs that are made from the oleander plant. Could be. Point three. Oh, point three. Why should Duncan Sanford send for his wife and his daughter and then not turn up? Why? There's no logical reason, unless... Unless? Unless, as you said, he's involved in the occult. Could Duncan have hypnotized Jennifer in some way? From a distance? A letter? No, not likely. Hold on. What is it? I wrote that. <laughs> we'll have good times for years and years to come, you'll see. Here or in Colorado, Daddy? Both, darling, or wherever in this beautiful world we wish.
did you say dead? She wasn't breathing. She wasn't moving. But there was nobody in the summer house when we found you. Nobody. Jennifer. Jennifer, will you please come in here? Put your arms around your mother, child. She's had such a fright. Oh, Jennifer. Jennifer. We must go away. We must go away. Be oh. I'm sorry, but I just couldn't stand watching that poor woman another minute. Well, whoever is way ahead of us. But maybe not for long. Oh, hello. Hello. It uh, just occurred to me, Mr. Tracewell, that Miss Glenn could use one of your tranquilizers. My what? Well, I thought amongst the drugs that you sell, you may have some of those new sedatives that I've heard about made from the oleander. Oleander? Hmm. Tranquilizers? I'm afraid not. Um, I hope George doesn't need tranquilizers yet. We've only been married a week. Well, congratulations, George. I had no idea this was your honeymoon. Yes, and as you said, business too, Tom. Well, should we demonstrate? We might as well. The cat's out of the bag. There's no need to do that, love. Oh, yes, I'm sure she'd like them. Here you are. Sample of lipstick, eyebrow pencil, eyeshadow. Made in France, finest. Cosmetics. George sells them. We thought Mrs. Faraday might disapprove, as she has such a posh clientele here. Do you want to lift him to the village? Hmm? No, thank no. you. OK. Good try. Shall we join the others? <laughs> uh, good morning, sir. Is your luggage ready? <laughs> no, but I bet my bill is. <laughs> I'm sorry to see you go, sir. I'll finish packing for you. Come on in. Hopkins. He's not a bad guy, so it's not the butler. It hasn't been for years. I'm going into the village. Not alone, you're not. But you've got to stay here. That's going to take a little stalling. Faraday's chomping at the bit to throw us out. Well, if all else fails, I suggest you suddenly become ill. I had doubles on the orange juice. Clever. Good morning. Morning. If you don't feel any better, Tommy, ask Mrs. F for a thermometer. This time I've got it, Varelli. I know what you are. But you will not tell. Ah, 
Is Mrs. Sanford in? No, Mum. Oh, well, I'll uh, wait, if I may. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know when she'll be coming back. She gave me my wages before she left. Hmm. I suppose you've been working for her for a long time. Hmm. Well, ever since she came to Wyndham. And when was that? Two weeks ago. She made it seem as though she'd spent her whole life in the village. And I found this in the cottage. It's Parrish, the man who burned to death in the shop. Okay. So now we know what Duncan's actor friend looked like. Let's not dismiss any item that gives us additional information. Did anything happen here? Well, I had a second vision of Varelli a little while ago. Only this time he had a meat cleaver in his hand. Does that mean that... It means that he's a butcher. A genuine, 100% bona fide, first-class wholesale butcher. So, all real Parmigianis come from Varelli, <laughs> Milano. <laughs> si, signorina. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Brent. A telephone call. Thank you. Madam's order, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. There was a publisher friend of mine in London. I'd asked him to trace Duncan Sanford. Duncan Sanford died eight months ago. I know. I wrote that. And it's been bothering me ever since. Do you know what's bothering me? How to tell Andrew. Well, apart from that, he died before he wrote her all those loving letters. Why don't they oil that lift? That's a wheelchair. I want to tell you the truth, Mother. I've been seeing Daddy. What? When? I couldn't tell you before. He's in trouble. Where have you been seeing him? Where is he? Jen, this isn't another trick you're playing on me, is it? Please don't do this to me again. I can't take much more of it. Don't ask me any more questions. Daddy will tell you. Now. Look. 
Palestine. My, my mother was born in Provence. I'm half French. Half French. I just wanted to know all about me in case. I wanted to enter a convent. What happened? Well, I won some silly beauty contest and got a scholarship to university instead. Come in. Louise. I thought Duncan. I thought Duncan wanted to see me. Duncan. Duncan is dead. He died eight months ago. Oh. That was when the tone of his letters became different, wasn't it? I'm flattered they made such an impression on you. But Jennifer said he... Jennifer, dear, vulnerable child, said what she was told to say. What do you want? See, Jennifer has unusual abilities. You might call them spiritual. Call them what you will. I intend to use them. I won't let you. Jennifer won't let you. Oh, I think she will. Such a sweet child, basically. And to think of her suddenly alone in the world. Though, of course, you've made the usual provisions for her worldly needs. The other people in the house. They'll wonder where I am. And they shall know. There's a charming actress whose mind had been going rapidly chose to do away with herself. <laughs> now, sign this. And I'll promise to take good care of your daughter. As good care as her very own mother. Only more stable. So much more stable. No! No way. Well, you might be able to move it by combining your faith with psychic force. Let's try it. I'm willing to try anything. All right, then. Now relax. Turn your eyes to the door. Keep your eyes on it. Now, count to three. And think them in Roman numerals. And you'll be able to see the other side of the door. OK. I see, um, a lock. Good. Can you see a bolt, too? Yeah, there's a bolt. And it's bolted. Now, think only of that bolt. Concentrate on the bolt. Okay. I'm concentrating. Oh, 
Open sesame. Now, what was that for? It can't hurt. Who make the noise? Ah, you again. I can for another bottle. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Let's get out of here. Jennifer, where's your mother? The chain she's wearing. It must be taken from her. It has the sign of Marcosius the wolf. It must reach out like this. I'm so glad to be going home. <laughs> Will you come and visit us? I just might be driving in a race near Denver this winter. Great. Bye, Mr. Kovac. Goodbye, dear. Jennifer, your purse. Thanks, Miss Brent.
I don't know how to thank you. Anytime you need a guy to wrestle with an old lady, you just give me a buzz. But how did you know she wasn't an old lady? Well, he has what he calls hunches. Well, I'm grateful it isn't anything psychic. Mm. <laughs> Do come visit us. Thank you. Both of you. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's a ranch house. Not an elevator in sight. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs> You've solved that one. You're thinking something? About how simple it all really was. When Duncan died, Paris saw a chance to get Andrea's money. A fortune. No, no. What he really wanted was to control Jennifer. To use her gift. Mm -hmm. All right, if you like to believe that. I do. Ah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I rented it. Mm -hmm. I'm off to Dover and then the Riviera. You know something? I'm gonna miss you. Me? Or our teamwork? Well, both. But the job's done. Yes, I suppose it is. Well, I hope you win. I'll try. Goodbye. Goodbye. Michelle. We're leaving for Paris. Paris? Someone's in trouble. I don't know who yet. You will find out, Tom Kovac. We will. Hopkins, Miss Brent's bags, please. You will come? Of course. Get in. Oh, just one favor about my name. Would you please make up your mind if you're gonna call me Tom or Kovac? Not both together. You make me feel like a telephone listener. But they both have such a lovely ring to them. Tom Kovac. Tom oh. Kovac. Tom Kovac. Tell me, do you have a middle name? Chester. Tom Kovac. Kovac Tom. <laughs> 